Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this Monday morning. Got a great show lined up. Got a special guest here. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Run by and check out the programs they have there for you. High today, 88. Low tonight, 74. And a water temperature, folks, is going up to 84 degrees. That's the hottest it's been all year. And 84 degrees. So a lot of things happening all along the bays and the Gulf. And we'll get to that shortly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our moon phases. We actually don't have a moon phase because we just had a full moon this past Friday night, so we know that we're in a, wa in a waning moon now, it's starting to go down. So three or four days after full moon, always good fishing in June. So be aware of fresh water, looking for those brim and shell cracker, and also uh, in the fresh in the salt water, that, that June uh, full moon has a tarpon. So a uh, tarpon might still be around somewhere if you want to try, try those out. Now let's take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Looking on the screen there, today is June the 16th on a Monday. Good strong tides. We have a high tide at 12.47 p.m. and low tide at 11.07 p.m. So we've got it coming in all morning and going out this afternoon. So whatever your choice, you like outgoing to be this afternoon, incoming to be this morning. And also, uh, if you look at the rest of this week, we're going to get some neat tides coming up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Not a, lot of, not a lot of action on the tidal flow coming for the weekend. All right? Now, let's go ahead. Uh, we'll go ahead and take our break, and we'll be right back with our special guest. Now, welcome back, and welcome, Lieutenant Stan Kirkland. Good morning. Good morning, Winston. Good Great. to see you. Great to have you on. Even on a Monday morning, we're going to get yep. the week started off right here on Panhandle yep. Outdoors. So, uh Let's get started. You got, I know you got a lot, always have a lot of good stuff. Well, got a few things, Winston. Uh, one of the first things you know is uh, I think you got a chance to go out red snapper fishing. Uh, we we just uh, just finished the uh, red snapper season. Uh, people had pretty good luck. Uh, the, uh, the, most people did, I should say. A lot of uh, mm -hmm. there was a, um, a lot of photos circulated of big fish that were caught. We only, of course, had a, a nine-day federal season. Our state season, of course, opened. Uh, May the 24th, May the 24th. In fact, I even said the wrong date on your show, <laughs> and you've got some very yeah. astute viewers yeah, that that caught my error. And uh, mm -hmm. I got to the office, and I had a couple of messages that like, "Hey, you dummy, uh, <laughs> you work for the agency. Don't you know when the season came in?" And I admit, I did. And I think Bill corrected the. Yeah. So uh, I, I apologize. I had my crow. Well, that just shows it's hard to keep them for so well, many days I, it and sizes. And I, and yep, but I, yeah, them. that's right. It is. And anyway, but the uh, the season goes to uh, July the 14th. Uh, state waters, so you can only fish state waters now. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention, uh, uh, Winston, is um, at the commission meeting this week, uh, our commission meets uh, the 18th and 19th, that's Wednesday and Thursday, uh, down in Fort Myers. One of the things they're going to be looking at is the, it's called the Gulf Reef Fish uh, Data Reporting System. And uh, that's a big name, but basically all that is, is uh, if, if the commission uh, passes this, and, it, and, I, and you know, I hate to predict what they're going to do, but I, I think they're, they're probably going to, to move forward on this, it, it will require, not, it's, not, it's not voluntary, it requires every fisherman who fishes for reef fish uh, to participate and then report um, you know, you, you uh, will report what you caught, whether it's grouper, snapper, uh, amberjack, uh, you know, uh, uh, black grouper, uh, uh, black snapper rather, whatever kind of reef fish it is. Um, there's, there's 16 million trips here in Florida, wow. saltwater trips, and they estimate somewhere uh, 10 to 15 percent of those trips are made offshore for uh, reef fish species. And there's just a tremendous lack of data. Mm -hmm. uh, the, everybody recognizes the federal system for data collection is, is, is horrible. It's called the MRIP uh, system. Um, it, and, it, and it basically takes into account, the MRIP system takes into account two things. One, as hard as it is to believe, they, they go through the phone book. Mm -hmm. And they call so many people and say, hey, did, did you go snapper fishing? They got moms, they got <laughs> wives, they got people that 
you know, they, they don't fish. And, and so they go through till they find so many people. They, they go through so many oh, people. So that's part of their system. The other system is um, dock side, called dockside intercepts. Yeah. In other words, they, they meet that. you at a boat. They ask you. In fact, I've had one of the people. And we cooperate with them, but it's not. It's, a, it's, a, it's really a, a system that's got a lot of problems, and everybody recognizes that, that, that reporting system. So what we're going to do, uh, Louisiana is already doing this, and I think um, uh, Alabama may, may be doing this. I'm not sure, but what we're talking about doing is essentially uh, requiring, you know, if you're going to fish for reef fish, you, you have to participate. You don't have to buy anything. It's a no cost uh, to you, the angler. It's a five-year program. It will sunset in five years, but I anticipate that the commission will probably reauthorize it or whatever the terminology is. Uh, but um, it's, a, it's a system, though, to get accurate, timely information, and then we can provide that and share that with the feds, and there won't be this, uh, you know, this kind of uh, 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 Broken approach to, yeah. to data collection. And we, so, we anyway. definitely we definitely need a, a new system. We all agree with that, right. and that, that's yep. the start in, in that direction. Right. And right. I, I think all of us would be willing to do that because it's going, we're all helping each other. And we're we're going to have we're not going to start off if we do this as an agency and we pass this. We're not going to start off with a hard-handed approach. We'll you know we'll have an educational approach to make sure fishermen know what's required. If we mm -hmm. find fishermen, it'll be noted on their license that they're a reef fish angler. It'll be printed on there. So we'll have a, a system and we'll be able to go to fishermen and ask, say, hey, uh, you know, how many snapper did you catch? How many grouper and that kind of thing. And of course, it requires on people participating. But uh, I think most people will if they understand that our future of our fishery is at stake, and yeah. you can see what yeah. happened this year. And, and we pretty well have a handle on, on say, the head boats and charter boats because right. they reported anyway. Right. So then this is a, like the missing link. Yeah, that that's exactly there. right. And this is for recreational anglers. Right. This is not for commercial uh, fishermen. So, yeah. so that's uh, that's uh, being considered by the commission this okay. week. That'll be on uh, on Wednesday. Uh, I believe that that'll be considered on Wednesday, uh, the first day of their meeting, or the, actually the first full day of their meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds All right. good. All right. Uh, one more quick. What else you got? Well, uh, Winston, scallop season is, uh, I know uh, that's something near and dear yeah, to you. Uh, scallop season is not far off. Um, scallop season's going to come uh, come in early, three days early. Governor Scott um, you know, ask uh, our agency about uh, opening scallop season a couple of days early. So it is going to open for the, the, the big weekend coming up. It'll open on uh, June the 28th. That'll take the weekend, uh, take in the weekend rather uh, on that Saturday. And then uh, so it'll uh, be on open, uh, be open on into uh, September. Uh, the bag limits haven't changed. Um, nothing's changed as far as uh, you got to have a dive flag, um, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. On the subject to dive flags, make sure if you do participate uh, that you stay close to your dive flag. We had a diver this week that was struck by a boat and killed uh, this past week, rather, uh, down at Jupiter Inlet where he uh, was diving, uh, snorkeling, didn't have a dive flag, and a boat um, cruising along hit him. Uh, actually hit two people. One of them was injured. The other one, uh, the other person was killed. So we, we've had that happen up in the panhandle uh, a few years ago. We've, we've had several people that have been hit um, and uh, one fatality that I know of here in the panhandle. So uh, carry, uh, make sure you got that dive flag and, and if you're in a group, make sure your group stays fairly close to that dive flag yeah. because that dive flag's indication, hey, Somebody's yeah. in the water. And I often see that at scalloping. People get carried away. I, I look out and when they'll get so far away from their boat. Right. Uh, and fortunately, it's in shallow water in the bay, but if they've got a little bit deeper in those channels, I've seen people fly through there too. So that, that can be a problem if right. you're not careful. You're exactly yeah. right. Yep. All right. Let's take this break real quick and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. You know, Stan's here always giving us all kind of information on. A lot of times we don't realize. Uh, and Stan, well, I realize that maybe y'all don't realize what a good fisherman Stan Kirkland is, yeah. and we don't get a chance to talk about it. So I told him a while ago, I said, we're going to talk about, I know you've been fishing lately, so t tell us a good fishing story. So, Well, uh, <laughs> uh, 
I, I've ha I've had mixed uh, luck. I've had uh, I've have done well, uh, you know, with uh, speckled trout and uh, and uh, and uh, redfish. I've I've had good good luck. Um, went the other day and got a, a couple of nice flounder and a 27 inch red. Caught about five or six other small reds. I released. So I had I've had a couple of uh, good trips. But I tell you, I fish alongside a group of guys that have humbled me. Really. Um, yeah, we we've been flounder fishing, and uh, I won't go into where because uh, you know they'd yeah. they'd uh, they'd want to mm -hmm. run me out of town if I talk about where we go. But I'll tell you, those guys are good, and they've been catching every trip. They'll catch six or eight flounder, and uh, I've been using and they're using grubs, and I use live bait, and Ooh. you know, and and I'm they're just killing me. <laughs> and uh, man, it has been humbling. But uh, I've. I think I've I've bought one of every grub that uh, you can buy. So, uh, but anyway, hopefully I'll uh, I'll, I'll carry, uh, carry carry forward and uh, catch some fish well, next that's time. That's good. And anyway. you, you out there wade fishing? You love yeah. to wade fishing. Yeah, yeah wade fishing. Yeah. It's pretty low impact. Uh, yeah. Just gotta you need a good pair of, and and the one good thing is where down where you are in St. Joe Bay where your um, mm -hmm. house is. Uh, that's a wonderful bay to start out wade fishing. All you need to do is watch your tides. Don't go on a low tide. Uh, preferably go on an incoming or a high tide. You want a little tide uh, change, but wear you some, uh, you know, wear you some boots or, or something to protect your feet. Don't go barefooted because there's stingrays and oyster shells and all kinds of stuff that uh -huh. can cut your feet. And uh, and uh, and learn where you know the holes is anything a grass uh, where there's sand spots in the grass if you want to use live bait if you want to use grubs it's just a good time of the year to go yeah, water yeah. temperatures warmed up as you were talking yeah. about earlier and uh, easy way to uh, good way to catch fun way to catch fish not I won't say easy necessarily <laughs> but it's a fun way when you do catch fish uh, 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 to go, to go, and then to you know take something home and eat it. Yeah, that, and these that, are all good fish. That is fun. All right, now let's get uh, go from fishing to alligators. Well, before we get in alligators, let me mention one thing, uh, if I can, on, sure. on fishing. Uh, before we talk about alligators, uh, the um, June 14 and 15 is uh, uh, this weekend is free fishing weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, coming up, it's uh, free okay, fishing. Well, we just had that, I think. Didn't we? Oh, we just yeah. had that. All right, okay. all right, we just had that. Yeah, we all did. Right. Well, we just had that. So we had, they do, they do. We've uh, had salt water. water. Salt. We had have? salt water. Right, that's right. Yeah. We had salt water, and then we've had the freshwater fishing weekend. So yeah. we've had those two weekends. Um, switching gears a minute, Winston, on uh, on al on uh, alligators. We've just had our second draw uh, for the uh, alligator permits. And the alligator permits have been uh, have been issued uh, for uh, just to, just about all of the permits, but there are a few permits that remain. There's close to six thousand permits, uh, I believe, uh, that were issued last year. We didn't issue quite that many, but roughly six thousand or close to six thousand permits that'll be issued. Um, so uh, they're two hundred, basically two hundred and seventy-two dollars. Uh, for a Florida resident, they're a little over a thousand dollars for a non-resident. You're allowed to kill two alligators. They can be anything above a hatchling, which a hatchling is considered 18 inches. Uh, but um, it's a it's a popular hunt. It'll start August the 15th. And one of the things that are that's being considered at the commission meeting this uh, this week, this upcoming week, is the um, uh, to go to to allow. 24-hour hunting. In the past, they could hunt. Alligator hunters could hunt from five in the afternoon yeah. until ten in the morning. But but uh, some trappers or alligator hunters are making the the point that they should be allowed to hunt all day. The reason we have not allowed all day hunting in the past was there was a perceived um, uh, uh, problem with fishermen and alligator yeah. hunters and and disturbing the alligators and them you know alligator hunters needing to be stealthy and get close and all but but you know the if the alligator hunters you know want it I think our commission is prepared to move forward but we'll see what they do you know Stan talking about it being popular I think I saw where there were over like 17,000 applicants for those permits it, nationwide a lot of people apply to get those permits. it is it's it's really uh, amazing um, and we have people that come here from all over the country. Yeah. They're not just Florida residents. Yeah. They come here. Uh, we've had housewives, attorneys, uh, 
you know, we've had people from all walk, walks of life, outdoors, outdoors men, mm -hmm. outdoors women, uh, you know, like to get involved. Even our own friend Ronnie Groom, uh, you know, went some years ago and killed a yeah. killed a big alligator. Uh, I think he got his with a crossbow. But, yeah, he did. Um, yeah, I, I don't um, think I want to get one with a crossbow. Well, yeah. you know. It's uh, all you got to do is get them up, and they say the trick is you get them by catch them by the tongue and then pull them in the boat. So all right. let's take a final break. We'll be right back. Senior Lieutenant Stan Kirkland, let's do our fishing game forecast first. Brought to us by Mark Cowart of Edgewater Beach Realty. I always like to get these fishing game times in here. Uh, always these two-hour blocks, usually about 12 hours apart. Now today, if you're going fishing outdoors today, this morning. Uh, 347 to 547 wrapping up, but this afternoon you're looking at 415 to 615. That'd be an excellent time right there. 415 to 615. Mark Howard uh, report. Now, Stan, we got all kind of other stuff to talk about too. So let's go uh, get started on it. Well, Winston, a couple of things I was going to mention. Um, we um, have another. Um, it's called Operation Dry Water that'll be coming up the latter part of this uh, this month, actually next week. Uh, it's June 27th through the 29th. And Florida's not the only state. This has been done across the country. And it's an emphasis uh, by fish and wildlife agencies um, about alcohol and, um, and, and the operators leaving the alcohol um, uh, alone while they're out on the boat. Um, we've done this the last couple of years and we're going to be emphasizing this again. Uh, and the reason we're doing this the weekend before 4th of July is to um, get the message across that, you know, you can't, just can't drink and boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know uh, Captain Paramore, when he's on with you, uh, uh, Ken talks about this as well, about our enforcement philosophy and all. You know, a, a person on a boat, it, it, it's under Florida law, they can they can, uh, of course, uh, uh, if they want to use alcohol, they can, but, but the operator cannot. And uh, they can't be under the, um, if they're over 18, uh, it's uh, 0.08. If they're under 18, it, it's actually, the, uh, the level is much tighter if they're under 18 years of age. And where we see this is sometimes people on jet skis or personal watercraft, yeah. and, uh, you know, they, they yeah. feel like they're young and invincible, 10 feet tall, bulletproof, that yeah. kind of thing. And, uh, but we take a real hard-nosed uh, stance about that. That's, so, good. that's good. So, the, but that's coming up. So uh, it's just a thing, though. Uh, alcohol for the operator needs to be left uh, left alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I hate to see you know boating and all. Boating is a lot of fun and all. Then you start to get some people out there. They want to boat and party at the same time, and uh, and that's always a bad situation. Yeah, and it's surprising how much alcohol shows up in the. Uh, when we do the end of the year boating accident yes. uh, summary for Florida, mm -hmm. we, we know because we get all of the information from every accident, from every coroner's report. So we know we can, we can tell you how much, uh, how, how alcohol, what percentage of accidents alcohol played a part. Mm -hmm. uh, it may not have been the, the, the deciding factor in that accident, but we can tell you that, you know, operator was, uh, was impaired. So yeah. anyway. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So what we got next? And the, Winston, the one thing I wanted to, to, to mention, somebody brought this up the other day, and that is, and, and I've talked about this before, if, uh, if you're a, uh, you got outdoor cats, one of the things, there's, there used to be some anecdotal information that, mm -hmm. that coats would prey on, on house cats, but now there's more concrete information. Um, I know in Lynn Haven, uh, uh, the, uh, about a year ag or so ago, we had a cat or two that was killed. And recently, within the last month, uh, uh, last four to five weeks rather, uh, we've, there's been two cats that apparently have been killed by coyotes or coats, uh, however you want to say it, in, in Lynn Haven. One closer to 77 uh, in North Bay, uh, mm -hmm. another one over off uh, Vermont uh, in that area. Um, I was looking at a clip that, and I printed this clip. Uh, Winston, here's here's two uh, two cats that were killed in Lakeland, Florida, mm -hmm. and they actually they first thought it was just like the episode in Lynn Haven. They thought it was some sadistic person yeah. that was killing these animals, but they did DNA swabs on the cats, and they were able to find um, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to conclusively prove that the saliva that was on the cats was from a, uh, a canine right. and, it, and most likely uh, it was uh, most corresponded with coyotes. So 
uh, again, the point of all this is if you let your cats out at night in areas, um, you know, you, you, you know, it, 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 cat may not come back. So yeah. anyway, if you, uh, so if you got, you know, got a cat, uh, keep them indoors if you can. Okay. All right. I will do okay. that. I know they had the same problem with a bay point last this past year. So. That's correct. They did. They sure did. Um, they did, Winston. And uh, uh, a lot of people are, uh, you know, well, they want us to get involved and take some uh, regulatory action. But uh, there, there's really nothing. We've opened up the laws as far as you can kill coats during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... Uh, if you want, if you own private property and you want to kill them at night, you can you can do that. It's pretty liberal. You can, it, it's about as liberalized as it can. But but we as an agency can't go out and and kill coyotes or trap coyotes on your property. That's between you and uh and and getting a, a trapper. Of course, it's it's much more difficult if you've got wide open terrain. But if you've got fences around your property, so a big fence property like a farm, yeah. coats will actually tunnel under that fence. Mm -hmm. And so they know where to set their snares to, to capture them. The snares have to be worked every 24 hours under Florida law. But uh, it's much more effective to do it that way than than just having a wide open place where, you know. You, you know, know, and they're fairly intelligent animals. They're very intelligent animals. You know, animals. because it's wild like mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and there's a lot of people starting to hunt them now, you right. know, predator calls and all of this. Yeah, a lot of, there's a number of programs yeah. where they where they do this, but uh, there's also some evidence when you try and suppress a population that it causes them to have bigger litters. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That's and. Amazing. Uh, I was reading that this year, and I went, "Boy, that's a no-win situation." You you think you're getting rid of them, yeah. and uh, it triggers something uh, that that causes them to have, you know, instead of you know, two or three pups to have, you know, four or five pups. So, are you any better off uh, trying to control them? So, well, anyway, Stan, we got to wrap it up, buddy. Winston, always good to be on with you. Thank you. Always uh, really good information. If you have any questions, call Stan Kirk in the FWC office. Always great to help you out and all, and uh, appreciate you coming on. Thank you all for watching Pan Out Outdoors. Do something good for somebody today, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Pan Handle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Pan Handle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Pan Handle Outdoors.